biggest rubber powered airplane ever. This video brought to you in part by J&H Aerospace, your source for advanced free flight and RC airplane kits, components, and accessories. JHAerospace.com This video also brought to you by Windcatcher RC, your source for carbon fiber, EPP foam, and other RC accessories windcatcherrc.com This is what your house looks like when you try to build a giant airplane. And uh, yeah, so there's stuff everywhere. It's huge. Absolutely huge. Alright, so about to put the last rib in. We're finishing up the last section of the wing. And so, I don't know if I showed this before, but we did use a notching tool to notch this um, trailing edge back here. If you're wondering why there's two notches, that's because I screwed up on measuring um, some things. And so I came back and made new notches. So, that's the last rib for the entire wing going in place. And so this is the, the center section. Uh, these are the spars. And the way these spars are made is there's a splice here because this is more than uh, 48 inches long. And so I used a miter saw to cut, uh, overlap these pieces, whack them, and then uh, that gave me perfect matched cuts. And then the carbon that I laid on here, uh, provided by Windcatcher RC, actually all the materials are, um, it was not long enough either, so I snipped it on a diagonal and then laid these braces across it. The carbon is just CADM. I know epoxy is a better option for that, but the, uh, the reality is that, um, CA is going to be good enough. And these have already stiffened up even though they're not, uh, top and bottom. Um, so where these are, I will have to shorten the shear webs, um, 
but we're going to put shear webs across the center section uh, as per normal. I may thicken them up a little bit. I think I'm going to go up to 1 8 inch um, on the center section ones at least. And uh, so that'll stiffen the wing just a little more without adding a whole lot of weight. And the way that we do this is very, very plain and simple. All we're doing is just lathering each one of these up with medium CA. And for those keeping count, I still have not finished the motor tube section of this airplane. And uh, I already have gone through uh, four bottles of glue, and this is number five. So now, spar will just drop right in. Those of you that are wondering, there will be uh, joiner tubes connecting the, um, the wing tips or outer panels, whatever you want to call them, uh, to the center section. This bar has a little bit of a twist to it, so it's not going to lay in quite right. May have to get a little more aggressive with it. Oh, still not wanting to adhere. Okay, so here we have the outer section. We've got all the spars uh, installed on the top surface and diagonals and so on. But what we have to do is install the lower ones. And before we can do that, we're going to have to put the um, shear webs in. They go like that. And that greatly strengthens the, the wing. I keep gluing the plans to the plane. But once it's all up, there we go. And I laid some carbon in here for the center panels. We'll lay much thicker carbon in. Um, but this is just for the outer section. So now what I get to do is lay these little guys in all along the wing. <clears throat> and then go from there. Alright, so I have all the shear webs in. You can see them here like this. Now, you can also see I laid carbon in there. I'm going to lay carbon on top of this and then put this uh, lower spar on it. And then out here, I just did partial ones because lazy. Um, these are all two pieces to fit across there. So we've got this jacked up here. Jack, well, stood up. I already got glue on here. And so what we're going to do this is how we join the fuselage sides together. And what we're trying to do, in actuality there, is line all that up with the marks. On the wood. On the flams. Right. While everything is scooching around. Since I have a non-stick surface called packing tape, it's all going to kind of wander. These are supposed to fit inside of here. And the exact location is not super critical. I don't want them real close to that rear peg. It'll be a setup four carbon rods that come through and they're going to engage aluminum tubes that are in similar formers on the front here. And so basically this is a means of providing a very over-engineered uh, join between the two. And so we can do that. And then I have another one that I think will stick 
back about here, but I want to I want to cap the top of that section first. And some across here. Try to get it to go down in there. Maybe. Let's see if I flip it over, maybe the slight bevel from the laser cutting will help me tap it in there. I guess not. There we go. Not perfectly lined up, but we'll put a little bit of shim material in there and that should take care of it. And that closes up the front there. Now, one of the things I didn't think about was leaving notches in here. So I get to cut some. Well, you have these that are, these aren't it? Nope. Okay. You want to go all the way through. Okay. Those go elsewhere. Okay. You see the and then there's the oven going off telling us it's pizza time. It's pizza time. But anyway. When we do kits for the um a couple of our big rubber models like the um, uh, Dawn Patrol and the uh, Dominator, they're going to have assemblies kind of like this, um, but not for this purpose. But they're going to go at various stations and allow you to line things up because lining up on a bunch of diagonal ribs um, is kind of intimidating for some folks. Yes, I know I could use thin CA on this and save myself a lot of trouble, uh, but it is expensive even compared to the regular stuff. All right, there you have it. Fuselage is basically that's the the motor tube, and it is done. So that's the last component that had to be built, and um, other than the propeller. So now we just start uh, assembling bits to get them to mate together correctly, and then on to covering. All right, so this is our nose block. What you can see here is we've got, this is a, a linear bearing, which not the, the best idea for this, but it's got a nice flange on here. We're gonna, um, the shaft is small enough that it kind of rides fairly lightly in there, so it should actually run pretty well. Um, this is obviously rough cut. So here's our fuselage. I don't know if you can see we've got some down and some uh, right thrust uh, built in. We put this uh, plywood facing around to hold it in there. Um, and so the nose block just slides in as you would slide in a typical uh, rubber power nose block. Now this will be keyed eventually, so we'll do the little corner cut thing that I normally do. I didn't do that initially because I just wanted to leave myself the freedom to um, kind of choose. And since this didn't go in perfectly straight because I misaligned some of the block layers, uh, that worked out well. You can see I've got an arrow saying up because I need down and I need right thrust. Uh, this airplane being basically a, a Dawn Patrol, um, I already know that it needs a fair amount of down thrust uh, for the setup I'm going to fly it with. Uh, but next we've got to sand this down and then we've got to put a, um, a bar out here at some point for uh, the re reverse Montreal stop and uh, then we can proceed from there. All right, so we have the nose block all nice and finished sanded. You can see that it mates in very nicely. And then we'll pop it out of here. This guy drops with a little bit of effort. Okay, a lot of effort. There we go. It drops in. And then our uncut as yet 
4140 steel prop shaft, which we may have some minor clearance issues with. I don't think we're going to have clearance issues, but it's still a possibility. And then washer, washer, rust bearing, washer, and aft lock collar. So we have that turns very nicely. So if we stick it in here, there we go. it spins with uh, not a whole lot of clearance, especially with the down thrust. Yeah. So we're going to end up having to shorten. That uh, arm, which will be a little interesting because you know, this thing has to provide cleaner, proper clearance there. But what we can do is we can shorten this a little bit because we're within factor of safety here. And then that allows us to shorten this out here because we won't need as much travel. And then that'll all be good. Alright, so we now have um, all the structure taken care of. So we've cap stripped key locations on various parts. Gusseted everything out as it needs. The house is a wreck because we're remodeling some areas and the kids are making a mess and so on. I hope it's building an airplane. Um, so now we're ready to cover. This has already been sprayed down with 3M77. And so we're going to put silver mylar on the vertical tail. So this is, uh, this is where we cover the very first part of it. And this doesn't have to be perfectly perfect because I can use an iron to kind of smooth it out, which is what I'm going to have to do anyway. I'm going to leave a little bit of overlap. And say, why are you not using a covering frame? Didn't feel like using one. Plus, this is not this is not like indoor. We're allowed to shrink the film. The, the laws of physics say that we're allowed to shrink the film in this case. So anyway, we'll come back once it's on there. I'll iron it out smooth and all that. So we've put the uh, second side of covering on. It's not on very uh, tight, and that's fine because we're going to shrink it with the covering iron. Uh, but when you do this, you've got to have something to overlap the covering on here. And so what I did is I used also right which unfortunately you can't get around you can't get anymore i think sig sticks it is roughly equivalent uh, but what i did is i put that on all the overlap and so now it's actually got a little bit of stick to it um, but what you can do uh, even if it doesn't lay in place is you can take your covering iron which i guess those are getting hard to get nowadays too um, and you can just lap it over because um, balsa right is, and SIG sticks it and anything else that's like that. Those are heat activated uh, covering material or uh, adhesives. And actually the 3M77 is as well too. Um, yeah, you can wrap it over here. And it just lets you put the covering on nice and tight. A few of you are wondering, where in the world did I get pieces of mylar this big? And the answer is, I threw money at that problem a while back. And I got a roll of extra wide um, quarter mil mylar. I think it's quarter mil. Either that or half mil. I think it's quarter mil. And you can come in here and you can start to take some of the wrinkles out. I don't know if they're all going to come out. I didn't do a great covering job on this. We're still on fairly low heat though.
This is by far the largest fin I think ever put on a free flight airplane. There, now I get the fins to spend the rest of the night figuring out how to get it to actually tighten up, um, which from an aerodynamic perspective, we're where we need to be because it is now nice and rigid. All right, so this is one wing tip. He's covered. The bottom is clear, and then one side is going to be red, one side is going to be blue. It's going to be the you same can see for. The as yet unshrunken clear mylar under the Yeah. Underneath. It's going to be the same for the other uh, wing tip. And then the center section is going to be. Was that white? Yes. Yeah. Center section is going to be white. Center section is there. With. Probably clear on the bottom too. All right, so we have the uh, fuselage cover or junction plate together, and we have 32 strands of one fourth, which consumed a tube and a half of our rubber lubricant. This is how we attempt to insert the rubber motor. So what does it weigh? Uh, the rubber motor is one pound, two ounces. This is the slow way. Now the cool thing is you can lock your propeller there. That's pretty cool. And then to unlock, slide it forward. All right, guys, I am here with Lee Krieger, and Lee Krieger has made this video possible through a generous contribution of, uh, first of all, a very nice winder. We've talked about that in a few previous videos. That is the Andrikov 5 to 1 uh, Wakefield winder. So, <laughs> Lee's not used to doing this part on camera. This is the fantastic part, and I love it. Uh, Lee is our supplier for carbon fiber, so he has the best prices in the business. And go, go check, go check. You cannot beat his prices. I promise you can't. I've tried, lots of people have. Check out Windcatcher RC at, uh, is windcatcherrc.com? Windcatcherrc.com. Pizza time. Pizza time. <laughs>